Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. This is our monthly tech meet, and we're going to be working on Silver Shadow height control components. And you wonder, wh what about those two O-rings? They go to this and this. This is one of the restrictor valves. Uh, these, when they get, they go bad, is th they will cause all kinds of popping noises. And I'll show you why once we get it apart. Yeah, I didn't think that far ahead yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'm just doing this for instructional purposes at this point. So typically I would think that I would just leave the arm off because whatever valve they're using is going to have its own arm and they come in different lengths too. Uh, and this should have been my first sign that this is an early one because it's a real long arm. They're, typically they're about this long on most of them. So there's not much in this valve here at all. You'll be surprised. And there are two of them, remember that. You've got this big tapered fitting. You've got a little O-ring in there. And this is actually a good picture. If you look in there, it looks like some garbage in there, doesn't it? Right there in the center, there's little yeah. pieces of rubber almost. Uh -huh. And that's where, where you can run yeah. into problems. Once I get it apart, you'll see that those tiny bits of rubber, as small as they are, can uh, cause a lot of grief. That's, that's this O-ring right there. That's what it is now. That one's not reusable. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> not yet. The other time. I was falling apart altogether. There's I used to one piece. It turned into a putty. This one's got some garbage in it. There's the rest. Okay. So the inside of this housing's got some garbage around it. This is the working part. You got these two discs with tiny little holes in it that go around this one housing, and it's got a little. This is gonna. It's stuck. Oh, it's stuck. So there's your working parts right there. So this restricts the amount of fluid through it. Um, through this. Through right. This so if you can see there's small holes, and it has to go around this thing, this little piston in here. And when it was jammed, I'm sure it's still, it won't even want to go this direction. That's not allowing what it's supposed to. It's not allowing fluid through. And it's supposed to walk back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up right now. That O-ring had turned to a sort of a putty. Yeah, it kind it's of. disintegrated. It says, I quit. I'm done. Are these parts situated next to each other on the car no, or different we, parts? No, we can, we'll go over there and I'll show you, show under the car where they're at. That'll be our last, whoa, last step. What's that pad? This is a Scotch-Brite Scotch. pad. Yeah. Uh, they're varying, uh, he knows all about these. <laughs> I don't get involved with them, non-woven, but... Oh, yeah. non-woven, see, he's even more particular. <laughs> <laughs> he makes abrasives. A, is that a restrictor valve? Yeah, that's what it's called. It's not, is that anything like a, a uh, proportioning valve? No. No. It may be in theory a little bit, but a proportioning valve, if I remember correctly, is supposed to um, regulate the fluid to the front and the rear brakes. Yeah. When you usually, when they, they, they usually only have them when you have disc up front and drums in the back because you, there's a difference in need. And the rear drums, drum brakes, uh, when they're combined with the disc brakes, need a bit of residual pressure too to hold the shoes out. Otherwise, your pedal drops too much and that brakes uneven. So, close. Now on the mineral oil cars, they have a valve that's a priority valve, and then they have a minimum pressure valve. And the priority valve is designed to turn off the rear hydraulics when you have marginal brake pressure. So when you first start the car, your hydraulics are not working on the mineral oil car in the back, 
until you get full pressure. And then a minimum pressure valve is a valve that controls the amount of pressure to your gas springs, which control your shocks, that's your shock, uh, and also uh, the, uh, the ride height. It has a lot to do with that. And those are set with a gauge when they're done correctly. So this is a real easy part to lose. So we're going to keep it right over. Where am I? There it is. We'll keep it over here and try to not let it get away. Let me tell you, in a 6,000 foot building with lots of benches and parts, these are hard to find. So it's, so it's really the O-ring debris that you're removing, not condensation, right? Well, it could be a combination of the O-ring debris, rubber hose failure in the system, allowing rubber to come through. And we still got to clean that out. So the only moving part, really, is this little button in here. And it should go in and out of here pretty easy, and it's still kind of sticky. So you really want it to be able to fall through pretty easy. <laughs> and sometimes, like I said, getting the noises out of the back ends on these can be very difficult, therefore very expensive. And if, if you don't really want to go through all that trouble, you can disconnect the wire to that. You won't have ever fast action, but it reduces the amount of noise. Um, and I have had people just say, can't we disconnect the system? And that's pretty easy, too. You just put a plug in one of the lines and uh, disable it. Of course, when they load it up with people and luggage, then it's going to sag in the back. This is the dirtiest one I've ever seen, just so you know. Is this one of the issues with Tom Shires? Excuse me? Tom, remember Tom Shire? Yeah, I know him. Um, is this one of the issues with his? Oh, with, with the noises? Sag no. Too? Uh, well, the sagging is, is a combination. See, here's, here's what a lot of people will do. If they've got a car that's sagging, one thing you have to remember is the height control system is designed to bring the car back to normal standing height. So if your car already has a standing height problem, you have to either replace the springs or shim them to bring it to proper standing height. This is only supposed to be working when you add extra stuff to the car, not all the time. So I've seen a lot of people just adjust them so that the hydraulics hold up the car. So I guess that works. It looks good. You drive it, you're going to get some weird feeling brakes sometimes. And on also, your number two light's going to be coming on all the time because it's working that system too hard. Um, it's not designed for that. That's why they have the slow action, but still, if it's holding the car up, it's displacing a lot of fluid to lift it up. So that's the cheater method to uh, correct the standing height. Um, but the proper way is to, to shim the springs or replace them. And I think on Tom's car, we, we shimmed the springs. Yeah, yeah. That's what you mentioned. Yeah. When you buy a car, I mean, you're not going to know all this about the springs and the shimming and the, the height control and all the rest of it. So you're. And unless you have the car inspected first. Yeah. Can you really find out all that in an inspection? Well, you can. You can definitely see a car that's sagging, and yeah. when you drive it, if it makes a lot of noise, you can definitely tell that, too. Yeah. A good inspection, the guy will drive it, too. Yeah. And I just had this last week. Somebody who lives locally who has a really nice Cloud 3 call me and asks about the inspections, what they cost, and somebody wants to buy it, and I don't want to have it inspected. And I said, okay. I said, but I tell everybody before you buy a car, especially a significant expense, you want to have it inspected. Yeah, but the cars are, I'd drive this thing to San Francisco. I said, well, that's, I'm sure you would. But you still, if you're going to buy a car, you want to have it inspected first. Okay. All right. Inspection is relatively expensive. Well, it can sometimes, yeah. But still, when you, if you figure the cost on a $100,000 car and you spend, say, $800 and find out it's a good car, that's worth it. If you find out it's a bad car, it's even worth a lot more. Okay. You're supposed to hear this thing clicking. 
So let's try and clean. The piston is shorter than the thickness of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you see, when it's on a flat surface and you put this little button in there, it's down below the shoulder. So oh, it's yeah. definitely, so it's made to walk back and forth. Now, does fluid pass around that? Or yes, that it goes right through so that. So then you definitely have to have clearance. Yes, you do. Clearance, clearance. <laughs> Usually you can hear them tick. And it should just fall right. Oh, there you go. We're close. Sometimes I take a tiny little file and I, th I think I see something. I'm going to be right back. All right.